hey everyone welcome back to my channel so in this video i'll be showing you how to evaluate amenorrhea primary or secondary and answer all the questions about what's the next step and stuff like that so let's get started number one guys if a pubertal female does not get her period at age 16 by age 16 that is that's called primary amenorrhea and if she already got it before but then she stops getting her periods for at least three months that's called secondary amenorrhea now with primary amenorrhea the evaluation is a little bit lengthy because it could be anything it could be a hormonal issue with her hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis or it could be an anatomical issue with her uterus and tubes hymen all these stuff regarding the channel through which blood should flow the hormonal issue has to do with the regulation of the cycle so which one is it is the aim of doing all these investigations number one just to rule everything out i want to confirm this patient has a uterus in the first place and so this first step in evaluation of primary menorrhea is always an ultrasound is there a uterus the channel through which blood will flow or not that's essentially from the get-go so i want to do an ultrasound now, let's say I did an ultrasound and this patient does not have a uterus. What is going on? The fact she doesn't have a uterus means that the Mullerian system or the paramesonephric system responsible for making the uterus and tubes embryologically has disappeared. Now, has it disappeared just like that in isolation? Or has it disappeared because there is a Y chromosome? And so the next step in that case is to do a karyotype. If it comes out as a normal female karyotype 46XX, then this is Mullerian agenesis. That means that the only issue with this patient who is a normal female is that she doesn't have a uterus. But this female has normal pubertal development, normal breast development, uh, even axillary and pubic hair, adrenarche, filarche, and everything. The only missing step in her puberty is menarche, right? And so that is just a structural problem. Her Mullerian system has just disappeared or has not developed. On the other hand, if the karyotype comes out as an XY, that is a problem because this means that the cause of the disappearance of her Mullerian system or the paramesonephric system that makes the uterus and tubes is the Y chromosome, right? And the SRY gene on the Y chromosome. So that must be androgen insensitivity syndrome. It means this was supposed to be a male, but because of androgen insensitivity, the male genital system has not developed and there is a Y chromosome that prevents the female genital system from developing as well. The difference between this patient and that on physical examination is that the patient with androgen insensitivity has no axillary or pubic hair because of no response to androgens, no, adre no response to adrenal androgens or testicular androgens in this patient who has testes, by the way, because of the Y chromosome. However, this normal female who has ovaries, right, on ultrasound, that's producing estrogen, has normal thalarche uh, and uh, female development, but uh, her response to androgen is normal, to adrenal androgens in this case, and she's gonna have pubic and axillary hair. You can review my video on androgen insensitivity for that purpose. So there's two possibilities if there is no uterus, and that's those two diseases. So the next step after the ultrasound finds out there is no uterus is a karyotype. Okay, guys, number one ultrasound, no uterus. The next step is karyotype. What if there is a uterus? then the next step is not a karyotype. If there is a uterus, 
then that means that the issue here is not anatomical. The issue here is hormonal. So I'm going to go up the ladder and evaluate for hormonal problems, right? I want to see whether the problem, the hormonal problem here is due to gonadal failure or is it due to pituitary hypothalamic failure. So to evaluate this axis, the next step would be to check serum FSH. So the first step ultrasound finds out there is a uterus. The next step, number two, is going to be FSH. Even though this patient has a uterus, why isn't she getting her periods? Then I want to see. So if FSH levels are high, that means there is a gonadal issue. Because despite the functioning hypothalamus and pituitary glands, yet the ovaries are not responding. So that must be gonadal failure. The ovaries are not responding to those high levels of FSH. This is hypergonadotropic hypogonadism. Why is that? Is it because the ovaries are not functioning, whether it's genetically or they stopped functioning because this patient received radiation or chemotherapy? And so I want to see whether this gonadal failure is genetic because of Turner syndrome or is it because of primary ovarian insufficiency. The next step here would be a karyotype. If it was due to Turner, then karyotype comes out as 45XO. But if it's a normal female who has primary ovarian insufficiency, then it's going to be a normal female karyotype 46XX. So that's the pathway if ultrasound shows a uterus. Is it gonadal failure or is it pituitary hypothalamic failure? Next up is FSH. FSH is high, then it's gonadal failure. Is it gonadal failure genetically, chromosomal, or primary vein insufficiency? The next step is a karyotype. Let's say we did an FSH level after the ultrasound and it came out low. That means nothing is wrong with the ovaries. It means that it's hypothalamic pituitary issue. Then I need to evaluate the hormones that affect the hypothalamus and pituitary. And these are the thyroid and prolactin. Now prolactin guys affects the hypothalamus and decreases GnRH, which in turn decreases FSH and LH production. And so it impairs menstruation, right? And prolactin levels, guys, can rise for any reason. Is it a prolactinoma? Or it could also rise because of hypothyroidism. Because with hypothyroidism, primary hypothyroidism, when T4 levels are low, this leads to high TSH levels and high TRH levels. What's important for me here is TRH, because TRH increases prolactin, right? And so if FSH levels turn out low in my next step, then the third step should be to evaluate for serum prolactin and serum TSH, which is easier to measure than serum TRH. If any of these is high, then you should treat the cause and this patient should get her periods afterwards. And that, guys, is the same as evaluation of secondary amenorrhea. So if I erase this and tell you to evaluate for secondary amenorrhea, there is no possibility that it could be a karyotype issue or that the uterus is absent or anything like that because the patient already got her periods before. So it's none of these four disorders. It must be hypothalamic pituitary, right? So in evaluation of secondary amenorrhea, it's the first step evaluating TSH and prolactin. And if they are normal, then this must be 
functional hypothalamic amenorrhea this patient may have lost weight severely or is exercising just too much and all these stuff or it could be that she has primary ovarian insufficiency and that could be known from an FSH level. So the first step in evaluation of secondary amenorrhea is to evaluate the hormones, not the anatomy or the karyotype because she got her periods before. That rules out anything like that regarding the uterus or karyotyping or anything, unless she had, let's say, DNC or Asherman syndrome, right? So... The first step in evaluation of secondary amenorrhea is prolactin, TSH, and FSH. If they turn out normal, then this is functional hypothalamic amenorrhea. Now, if all those investigations are normal and nothing is wrong, she has a uterus, uh, FSH is normal, prolactin is normal, everything, and this patient has primary amenorrhea, she hasn't got her periods before, and she has abdominal pain that is cyclic and all this stuff, it must be an imperforate hymen. And that is a diagnosis of exclusion and should be suspected, guys. Even though everything is going normal in this patient, normal cycles, and she has a uterus, normal karyotype, yet the obs there is obstruction to the flow of blood nothing is allowing this blood to come out and it's accumulating because of an imperforate hymen and that is treated by hymenotomy i should open a channel for this blood to flow right all right guys i hope this video helped let me know what you think